I was checking out my responsibilities, and staying up late one Friday night around 11 p.m. while procrastinating on my college work. All my friends were already asleep and I wasn't in the mood to play any video games. So I turned on the TV to see if any good channels were on. While I was channel surfing to Adult Swim for reruns, my eyes immediately caught Comedy Central playing the South Park opening sequence. Normally, Comedy Central would play an infomercial around this time, but I was too excited to notice or even care. It was an earlier intro with the banjo player. However, during the part where Kenny mumbles his lines, I realized that the video quality appeared poor and unstable, even for South Park standards, as if someone recorded it on VHS tape. Usually, the episode begins right after the intro, when I or Mr. Hanky flies towards the South Park sign, but this time, static erupted and it lasted a bit longer than usual, until the actual episode began. The actual episode started with no music at all. It showed Kenny walking through the streets of South Park. But it wasn't the hopping animation that the show is famous for, but an actual walking animation. There was no sound either and no sign of the other boys or background characters in that matter. As Kenny continued walking, classic locations popped up like Tom's rhinoplasty and Stark's Pond. Despite the geographical errors like showing the school at one part, then the movie theater after that, I shrugged it off, believing it to be the type of indirect joke the creators are notorious for. I decided to continue watching it. But then, after the five minute mark, the looping buildings started to mix away at random, and the new buildings began to appear, showing locations such as Raisins and Casa Bonita, only either one of those would appear until later seasons. I didn't know that at the time, of course, but in hindsight it's pretty weird. A door opening was suddenly heard in the background, followed by the sounds of various people shouting and other sorts of commotion. The audio was too muffled and distorted, so I wasn't able to hear what they are saying. But it sounded too real to be an act. It sounded like a group of people yelling at a crying woman to stop. Those people were begging not to do it as the crying woman warns them to back off or she'll take them with her. I was confused. The screaming and begging grew louder along the way and during all of this, the animation itself revealed the background changing into more realistic details. The looping buildings began to deteriorate over time and it appeared to synchronize with the screaming. First it showed signs of neglect, like boarded doors and broken windows, and the next loop shows the structures discoloring away due to age, and it continues to loop in worse conditions than earlier as the screaming grew louder and violent all the way, until to the point where all the famous landmarks were barely recognizable and falling apart. But Kenny for some reason, didn't experience change at all and not only that, he continued to walk as if nothing was happening. Both the audio and the animation lasted for another five minutes, during which the voices were getting clearer up until the end. Several of the voices I was able to identify and recognize, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, along with Isaac Hayes, telling the crying woman to think about her husband. Trey and Matt sounded really afraid in their midst. It didn't sound anything like a joke at all. It sounded too real for a prank by them. I then heard Isaac telling her, Please don't do it! Before silence for a little bit. At this point the animation froze, as if it was waiting for the woman's answer. Finally, the woman just barely muttered in a whisper. I'm sorry. Right before a loud gunshot was heard following a flood. Screams of help, panicked yells for help, and crying was heard before the animation cut to black. Several minutes of silence had passed, until the animation returned to Kenny walking again in a loop, and the background returned to normal as if nothing had happened. Only this time after a minute or two, Kenny stopped and turned around into the viewer's direction and walked towards me as the camera drew nearer and nearer, until Kenny was close enough for his hooded face to cover the screen. His staring eyes gave me shivers as Kenny continued to simply look at the camera's view, as if he was watching me from my own TV. Not blinking at all, as if he was under a trance, he continued to do so for four minutes before the screen cut to black as the credits quietly played. Images of Kenny's eyes lingered on in the credits until it finally faded away during the brand its airplane logo. Soon the screen faded to black until an infomercial started playing as if nothing had happened. I don't know if the events that occurred to me that night were some kind of a sick joke Trey and Matt played for people like me, or something far more chilling. Even while I type this, I still feel those eyes staring at me with the same haunting chill. The death that was heard on the audio was possibly a suicide.